Example 10. Find the vertical asymptote of the function equals tangent x. Alright, so what do we know about tangent? Especially if you take in trigonometry. If you haven't, it's okay. I don't condemn anybody for not learning calculus is hard when you don't know a lot. I'm trying to teach my course so anyone can learn it. So let's say that sine x is to be cosine of x. So if you take in trigonometry we know that this will, tangent equals this. So that's really important. This is no when x equals 0. So, weapons when x equals 0. This whole entire function equals 0, right? So, if you have a calculator on hand, you don't even need to know trigonometry to know this. So, let's plug in tangent equals 0. Like it's a 0. Alright, so what happens if if we start plugging in in numbers like pi and a half. Let's see what happens. So with this, let's see a plug in tan tangent pi divided by half. It says error. It says error. Right. So we know that, right? So we gotta figure out potential vertical asymptotes and so what do you think it's going to give us vertical asymptotes we got to think of numbers in which cosine is zero so what number did I tell you guys to plug in your calculator pi and a half so what happens when cosine is pi and a half if you're taking trigonometry so cosines what did I say? pi and a half so this is zero that's pi and a half that's pi we know that when cosine is pi and a half it's zero because cosine the big significance is x right so if cosine was 0, it would be 1. But since cosine is pi and a half, it's 0. And so that means that when this is 0, tangent is undefined per se. But what's happening is when cosine is undefined, our curve of the tangent line, it's going infinitely so we gotta f figure out more points where cosine is zero so what other places is cosine zero three pi and a half alright what else negative pi and a half right negative numbers two and negative 3 pi and half and so there's a trend happening alright this question is asking us remember what the question is asking us it says find the vertical asymptote of this given function and we could tell there's an infinitely many amount of asymptotes and so how would we write this out if we know that these functions are approaching from the left hand side and the right hand side are going infinitely up, down, and we have infinitely many asymptotes, well then we have to write something out like this. We say thus x equals pi and a half, right? Because that's a significant number that matters when 
tangent it's an error and when cosine zero so this is really important plus n why n because n means signifies that this is going to change for a given asymptote and pi right because how long does it take for us to change over here that's a pi one whole pi right one pi takes us to change from over here to over there it gives us another asymptote all right but what happens if we had a, a certain number right here that's not leading over there to 3 pi and a half let's say we had 0.1 well then this would be wrong right so now we gotta keep adding to it so let's say when n is an integer and so what does it mean to be an integer an integer right it means to be a whole number Right, we can't put 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, because then we're we're doing what the function is already doing. It's going infinitely up and infinitely down, etc. It has a bunch of points in here for its function, its curve. But we we want to do what this question is asking us, right? We wanted to find these asymptotes, so we need integers, so whole numbers, not fractions. So this is our statement: x equals pi and a half plus n pi when n is an integer. 